Hi, I'm Joe Dante. This is Trailers from Hell. In 1960, Jerry Lewis made his directorial debut with a picture called The Bellboy, which surprised everybody by going on to be a very big hit. Uh, Paramount Pictures decided that maybe Jerry did know what he was doing, and they started to give him more and more creative control over his pictures. By 1964, when he made the picture we're going to look at now, The Patsy, uh, he had pretty much total creative control over his movies. And um, this one coming toward the end is one of the more offbeat ones. Here it is. kind of Jerry's version of Entourage. It was originally conceived as a follow-up to The Bellboy. Like all Lewis movies, this is really about Jerry, and the Patsy finds him in a darker mood than usual. When a famous comedian dies in a plane crash from another Paramount movie, The Mountain, his crew of flunkies and hangers-on see their gravy train going off the tracks and try to turn an idiot bellboy into a buddy lovish like star to replace him. The remarkable supporting cast registers varying degrees of exasperation and bafflement at Jerry throughout. Stanley, my boy. Yeah. How would you like to make $150 each and every week? <laughs> Besides those who are prominently billed here, uh, you get to see Ed Wynn, Mel Torme, Richard Deacon, George Raft, Jack Albertson, Scatman Crothers, Rhonda Fleming, and more. None of them really have as much to do in this picture as we might like. This was Peter Lorre's last picture, and he's hardly in it. This is also John Carradine's only Lewis picture, uh, which may have something to do with the fact that Jerry wouldn't give him time off to land the lead in the Munsters TV series, which he then didn't get. The presence of showbiz types like Ed Sullivan and Hedda Hopper adds icy verisimilitude to one of the more bitter portraits of Hollywood phoniness and backstabbing this side of the big knife. But nominally, it's played for laughs, and it gets them too, especially in a set piece with the great Hans Conried, as a singing teacher who's reduced to a quivering wreck by Jerry's hapless destruction of his studio full of antiques. There's also a funny bit with Jerry messing up the lip sync to a bad pop song in a teen dance program hosted by the forgotten teen empresario Lloyd Thaxton. I saw this in a, at the Terminal Theater at the end of the subway line in Philadelphia on a double bill with a picture called Rhino. And I'll never forget the stunned audience reaction to the quite unexpected ending, in which everything is revealed to be a movie that Jerry is making and that we are watching. The love interest, Ina Ballon, seems to be the only character not in on this self-reflexive joke. It's a very unusual gag for a picture in 1964, and the audience didn't quite know how to take it. I don't know if this had anything to do with the picture's rather troubled reception. The reviews were uniformly bad. And the critics in general were down on Jerry at this period, but actually when you look back on it, it was one of his more creative periods. And some of the movies that he did here were quite remarkable. This one isn't quite as groundbreaking as The Ladies Man, but it does have a different tone than a lot of Lewis's pictures. 